There's a gentle breeze All the birds are making homes inside the evergreens The air is clear With our loved ones close You can pick out every star without a telescope G'day my friends and welcome to Marty's Garden right here on YouTube. Thanks for coming to watch another live show. It's raining here again on the coast where I live so don't want to get down on site. Can't really get out and film. And thought you know what could be really good is get back to the basics what I call getting back to number one and talking about worm farming right like discussing the options of how does a worm farm work because a lot of people get confused about this and when you know the basics of how they work and operate then you can one run one more efficiently and look today we're going to look at two different designs we're going to look at the flow through worm farm where we've got a hungry bin there as an example and then we're going to look at the tiered farms now the flow throughs and the tiered farms are so many different brands they're all pretty similar they'll do much the same thing they've all just got little bits of advantages and disadvantages but they're very, very slight. So once you know how a worm farm works, then it's all gonna be really, really good for you. So why have a worm farm? Well, they're nature's little compost recyclers that you store these little worms and then they eat all your scraps, turn into something valuable, so turn your waste into something valuable, like worm castings, which is a beautiful organic fertilizer that's really good for all plants and then your own liquid fertilizers and there's lots of different ways you can make these fertilizers from very simple to go more high end into like a worm tea where you're adding molasses and building up these microbial blooms and things pretty exciting really when you think about how it should be done because not not enough of us in my opinion are doing it uh, around the globe even though you see them in a lot of stores here in Australia um, I don't only know of one other person in our street that would be doing that. And she learned from me, actually, by uh, doing my course here inside in the members area. And she's got a great, uh, great worm farms. So we're also moving into the sustainable age, right, where things are changing quite quickly. Well, not quick enough, but they're changing in a more of a rapid environment where the governments and councils are soon going to say, hey, you need to deal with all your own organics on site, or you have to pay someone to actually take the organics away. We don't want to be putting them into landfills anymore. Same for businesses and things. So we're looking at all different scales from little worm farms at home in apartments to bigger ones for bigger families, and then right out to the larger systems for our small businesses, cafes, shops, all those type of things, and they all work pretty much in the same way. It's just a matter of scale and volume, um, which makes it a bit trickier as you get um, a bit larger. So I've got my list here. If you ever watch any of my live shows, you'd know I write out my uh, my list here, which is my script. So sometimes you might see me looking down, uh, checking stuff. So. You know, if we're talking about worm farms and how they work, well, we also need to look at what they eat, uh, you know, inside the worm farm. So we'll sort of cover that as we're looking at the pictures and things. So I've got some images to show up for you. Uh, we'll get this one up first and talk about that one, the flow through farm. Now, when they're really happy, they eat a lot, right? They eat quite a lot. When it's colder or it's a bit too hot, they sort of slow down a bit and not eating as much. And when they're really happy, they breed like crazy and you end up with too many. So that can be a really good problem in some ways. And they're working for you. Like they're doing a job that um, if you just give them a little bit of a helping hand, they're going to break down your waste. And you can even, you know, if you're not into full on in the garden, you put it out in your lawn, put it underneath your trees. You know, like you can use it in so many ways in the pot plants and there's no smell and stuff like that if you're doing it properly. And it's pH neutral, so uh, seedlings are fine, it doesn't burn any roots or anything like that, and actually protects a lot of plants with uh, the microbial microbes that live around the, the worm cast, which is their pup, that actually help protect the roots and the plants to make them healthier. So a healthier plant, less susceptible to disease and pests and things like that. So let's bring in some people from our live show. Rick Thelian, hey Marty, welcome. Thanks for coming to watch another show here today. Hopefully my sound's coming through okay. Trying to fix it a little bit better. Got the headphones on today. Um, so we just get no any type of sort of reverb, get that sort of sound 
more clear. So let me know if I'm coming in nice and fine there. No admin here, just me, me you, and you guys that are here. Uh, Lisa Maple, hello, it's raining in Missouri and 43 degrees. Well, yep, sort of about maybe 23, 24 here today. Uh, 2025, I believe all councils need to act. Um, yeah, they're doing 2030 here. Um, you know, where I live is still a way off. But um, yeah, we're coming through. So hopefully it'll all work out quite well. Now being a, um, a weekday, we do usually have a more of a popular show um, on the weekends. But at the moment, I've been working down on the site on the weekends. And then I ran a show last Sunday. Um, so we'll see how the weather goes over the next few days. Um, whether we keep running out the, the live shows, I get to practice um, using my software, talking with you guys, and get out this information that I believe is uh, really, really vital. It's funny, I had um, someone call right on when I started, um, and I just need to answer that really quickly. In about an hour, I can go for a surf. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Just uh, like, like I said, if we had the admin, whatever, we could do that. But yeah, want to get out and uh, get into the ocean today before all this really bad rain comes and do some exercise. Didn't sleep very well last night, so I think some diving in the ocean uh, may help just a little bit. So. Right, let's get into the slide that we have here. Flow through worm farm. Now, this is a hungry bin, right? And I had one of these, I sold it. I've got another one coming. Uh, Permi Pete from Wormbiz, I believe, is dropping it off for me. We'll just to see when it turns up. Now, I've got lots of videos about the hungry bin on my channel. So uh, if you want to learn a lot about that, uh, type of flow through worm farm. I suggest you go onto my channel Marty's Garden and just type in hungry bin and you'll get lots and lots of uh, you could even type in just into the, the search box Marty's Garden hungry bin you'll get lots of videos uh, about it. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship uh, with this worm farm um, and I just got to answer back to that bit of a crazy time at the moment sorry all right um so i've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with this worm farm i bought mine second hand it lasted for years the plastic's really good and strong i found i didn't have really many problems with it one of the problems i've got a bit of a sore neck i've had dystonia over the years and i've got neck issues and so moving around a heavy farm was definitely not on once they're full Man, these things weigh a ton, and I believe all th flow through worm farms once they're full would be really, really quite, quite heavy, right? So depending on the size of your flow through worm farm. Now, there are a lot of other flow through worm farms that actually don't have heavy plastic sides, and we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of plastic versus the aerated um, ones, so the airflow gets in on the sides. Now. They do come in uh, different sizes. There's an Aussie one called the Swag. I nearly bought that company. And you know what? I'm still thinking about it. I just got nowhere to produce the actual worm farms. Um, no little factory space or anything like that. He wanted about $10,000 for all the templates and all the materials and stuff. And it's probably worth that, but um, having the space to put them together and then being able to sell them uh, is a whole other thing. But they're a great farm and they hang up in the trees. The swag, they call it. I don't have a picture of those, but I might do a review on one if I get hold of a swag. Um, so the hungry bin, let's have a look at that one first. And you can see here, if you can see my mouse on here, all the plastic, we've got the water down below. So it drips through, catches the leachate, if that's the material that's breaking down slowly and dripping through. Or if you pour the water through and then you get a whole lot of big flush coming through, then that's a drench. Then you grab the drench, it's not leachate and then you actually pour it around the, on the garden. It's the dripping stuff that comes through that has the bad bacteria in it generally. If it's not, if your farm's not really oxygenated, that can be a problem. There's lots of controversy and debate about that uh, online, but if you keep it 
uh, very well oxygenated, less problems with any type of funky smells and bad bacteria, right? So the plastic, the plastic advantage of a worm farm is that it'll store moisture on the sides and the worms like to hit the sides where the plastic is and then touch that moisture <clears throat> on the side of the farm and connect with the moisture again, especially if the farm gets a little bit dry, they'll move to the outside edges or to the lid of where the evaporation's going and get into that moisture side of things. The thing, um, one thing about them though is they can heat up quickly. If they get too much nitrogen or too much food in too quickly, they can get, um, if too many things are added, like some manure, raw manure, stuff like gases and things can't escape. And also that, so the airflow can be a lot less. Um, I think the Hungry Bin needs to have a 2.0 version myself. It needs to have more airflow. Um, that's just my personal opinion. They haven't bought out a 2.0. I never talk with Hungry Bin. They've never once uh, spoken with me, sent me any information or anything, or even said thank you for selling them lots and lots of Hungry Bins, right? Um, but I believe there should be a 2.0 and that it could be a better system. The actual worm farm down here where you can see my mouse, um, that's the area where you collect the castings. There's a little um, latch there that gets quite heavy and I found with my neck I had trouble getting that undone. But they are a strong system. Uh, they, you know, I think you get 10 years out of one of these things. So they're 400 bucks, $40 a year. Uh, in the long term, um, I think they're, they're worth it. They probably should be a little bit cheaper, but they're worth it in because they last for such a long time, I guess. Let's have a look at uh, the next image here. Now you can see me looking inside my hungry bin, so you're going, oh yeah, Marty, you had a hungry bin. Where's your hungry bin? There it is right there, right? And you can see I've got this layer of egg cartons uh, on the top. And what I do with the egg cartons is I actually like put layers on and I sprinkle coffee grounds over the top and then put the water on top and the water just goes through the egg carton slowly filtrates down through, takes that nitrogen from the coffee grounds through and helps break it down and gets good bacteria and stuff in there. And they come through and breed all in here and eat all this stuff up and turn it into a really good uh, material. They lay lots of cocoons in it. It's a great little hack I've got. If you look up worm farming hack in my, on my channel here, you'll see that, um, yeah, that's what's going on there. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, I reckon. So let's move on to the next thing. So underneath that, right, this is what you see underneath when you lift up that, uh, all those egg cartons and stuff, that's what's under there, that the material. Uh, you can see lots of like old carbon there, bits of sort of manure and stuff, and you know, they're just hooking into that and just feeding on the rest of that, what's left over. And so uh, I've underfed there on the situation because they've been eating a lot of the cardboard and coffee grounds there, and you can't see, that's why you can't see any veggie scraps and stuff like that but yeah just look how healthy they are nice and red and very very happy right so let's move on to the next worm farm this is a uh, what we call a tiered system uh, a flow through system and this type of worm farm uh, I, I quite like it. This is the one that I teach in my course, Starting a Worm Farm, a Beginner's Guide, which you can access, uh, which is available uh, in the members area. There's a join button generally below this video, or there's one in the chat box and in the description as well. And you can get over there, Worm Wranglers Level 3, you can get access to all this. And then all the intermediate videos and another course, Starting uh, Organic Seedlings, a Beginner's Guide, where you can learn how to worm farm get all the teas, juices, liquids, composts and things out of it and grow your own seedlings. So uh, the two combined work a really good work really well together. Now, well just before we get into talking more about this worm farm, we'll have a chat with the crew that are coming through. I'd like to know what type of um, worm farms you guys have. Uh, whether you've got a flow through or a tiered worm farm or is a certain brand that you think uh, is better than others and g'day Tommy, g'day LP and uh, yeah and yeah let me know what type you've been using. We're going to be running for just under an hour today and we'll yeah talk more about worm farming and this system here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this guy. Let's have a look here. 
All right, so we've got this worm farm here now. We've got the, the flowed through system, the tiered one. Remember, let me know what type you're using. Are you using, using the, the tiered system or are you using a flow through system? Let me know in the comments box down below if you're watching the rerun uh, as well. Now, if we're looking at this top system here, now this is more an advanced farm. Before we get started, we wouldn't have this top third level on here, right? Generally, generally speaking. We wouldn't have it. And what we do is we remove that and we would just have, let's say, no, let's change this. We would take this one out, which has got the castings in it, and leave that one here. So we've got our lid, we've got our bedding material, which is here, which you can see the browns here, and on top here, we have our food. So this light brown area would be our food, and the worms would be active all through this brown sort of like area here which is our bedding, moving up and eating the food, eating the bedding, dropping their castings. The castings seem to go towards the bottom. They can stay on the top, but being on what type of farm we've got. And then once they start eating all that bedding and you notice a lot of it's disappearing, it's starting to turn into more of a clay-like putty material then and you see the, the food starting to go. Then you grab another one of these bins and you put it on top, right? You whack that on top put some more bedding on top, and then you start feeding again. And the worms will crawl up through these holes here. They'll crawl up through the holes, uh, chasing the food. You stop feeding down below, and they'll move up. So that's called a migration system. And then what we do is, once that's right, we pull that worm casting tray out, and we take those worms, worms out of there, any that are left over, we put them back into the farm. Now I teach that full harvest method in the Worm Wranglers level three members area. Inside so that the links here available to learn how to do that. Something that it's a bit tricky to teach in here. It's only what I, I just leave that in the members area because um, I need to have that space there and I've got to have something in there for you guys, for the members. And it's, you know, there's more, let's say, uh, it's the pro version and not many you don't see many people teaching that style of how to do that So then we've got down below right here. So every time we're pouring water in we're going water in water in water in It's collecting down below here. And it says worm tea collection Well, there's a lot of debate about this is whether this is worm tea or not really uh, like you know, like we can't go into. I don't think it's even in the dictionary and all that type of stuff. And I don't even know if it's in Wikipedia or whatever. But a worm tea is more really when we're grabbing the the castings. We've got it in some type of bag. We're putting it in water with a bucket with some molasses, and then we're so some sugars, and we're actually oxygenating it highly, and we're breeding the microbes up in the system. Then we release it out in the garden. So it's a big my, microbial bloom. And the material that actually is it's breaking down and losing its juices is soaking back through and going back through the system. That's a leachate, right? So that's the stuff generally if it sits in the bottom, people will just leave their farms. They're really lazy. It just leaches down through for the week and at the bottom there, there's no juice because they haven't been putting any water through it. It's just a leachate. That's sort of a, if you add a bit of water to it, you can throw it in the garden. It's still okay. But generally that's where the bad bacteria is because it's gone anaerobic. It's gone a bit funky. So what I teach uh, more, and I do, I'm changing the terminology more and more over time, but um, I talk about this in my in the course about making all these different types of liquid fertilizers and the basic ones so you can make them really quick and get really good results. I'm starting to call it a drench now because you pour, I show you in the course where you pour the water right through and it goes down through here, it flows through, so you've got to have your bedding right if you've got your bedding right, it's not compacted and it's aerated and stuff, it'll flow through these systems here, come out the bottom, it'll pour out your tap. I recommend you remove the tap. I've got another video about the hack there, removing the tap on my channel. And it'll flow out much easier. The taps seem to get blocked up and things. I'm not a big fan of those. Have a bucket down below, catch that and let it fall as far as it can. Pour it into another bucket, into another bucket like that, like that. Oxygenate it really like a lot. That way, uh, any of the good bacteria, any of the nutrients in there, when you put it straight on the plants, uh, there's scientific proof to show that that air and oxygenation somehow 
gets to the roots more efficiently and then the plants can uptake it really quickly which is really awesome for pot plants because the pot plants aren't photosynthesizing and sharing organisms uh, as much they're going more off the nutrient that's in the in the pot more so than something like it's in the ground that's living off all the all the good bacteria and the photosynthesis and the carbons and things so this is really how uh, a worm farm works so we just to break it down again we have we start off with two tiers once that tier is getting eaten and getting full we put another one on top they migrate up to the top farm and then we pull that center one away and we keep going over and over just remember when you put, do your farm don't clean it out full on so some people would polish the thing nearly you don't do that you've got to leave some old castings in there some leave some of that old bacteria in there so it can reform and remultiply when you put bedding back in and i highly recommend if you can get hold of a good compost a mushroom compost or some aged cow manure or things like that um you'll end up with a better bedding than just using cocoa fiber cocoa fiber takes a bit longer to get that nutrient flowing through into the system so we can have lots of healthy worms like this chewing through now they say that they can eat half their weight in a day I guess in their optimum time when they're really, really, really happy and hungry, um, they would be. When they're younger, apparently they eat even more because they're just wanting to grow and get big and get ready to multiply. So uh, that makes a lot of sense. And cheers. Thanks for coming to watch the show. I just need a little break here for a sec. As you know, um, I start to lose my voice when we get close to that hour. We'll get back to... Um, the comments here i get back in the software and i can see what you guys are doing terry browning can of worms but i find full trays of castings can be a bit heavy to lift but other than that it can work well yeah okay can of worms they last quite a while i think i've got a can of worms out there the round one so to speak i think the legs aren't so strong in them from memory um lisa maple just two simple tub style bins working great but nervous about collecting the castings and there are a lot to collect yeah yeah for sure but like i said lisa in the, um in that course there you can learn how to do it efficiently once you learn how to do it once you'll never have to bother again uh, you'll just have it wired once you do it a few times you just get better and better at it and yeah you'll just, you save every worm save all your castings and um, you'll get good results from it that way all right, so we'll go back to our worm farm here and keep looking at this system. Now, there, as I said, there's lots of different brands about this type of worm farm. Um, I know of about five, so to speak. Now, when we're looking for them, what I recommend, they don't show it so much in this, but good strong legs, really important because they get quite heavy, especially when you if you're going for longer uh, with your worm farms. You want to have the good strong legs that lock in and keep a uh, solid worm farm. Some of the older ones, the very old models, the legs are a bit weak, I find, and um, they need to yeah, work on those uh, designs. Generally, you'll get sort of three to four tiers. I generally find that you need to only go three tiers high. You don't really need the fourth tier. You can go to the fourth tier and maybe use it to store some uh, aged, some compost, some aged compost, so you're aging it a bit more um you know or even use it like as an underground farm where you stick it in the garden somewhere and you've got extra worms you can release it back into that as long as you've got some type of lid uh, for it and so you can feed into that system so you know four tiers is, is quite a lot i find that i never really go above three because i'm harvesting that middle one and then i've got this one going and i find very rarely you need the fourth one uh, on top i don't know why they sell the fourth one really to be honest uh, yeah it just I'm, I'm a bit confounded with that i've never really got and they're big and heavy and stacked too high they fall over legs can't handle the weight um we need some new designs some new 2.0s uh so to speak instead of they're just regurgitating out a similar design over and over and doing little tiny improvements um over a 10 year period um, well, longer than that now they've been around. I'd like to be involved in the possibility of designing a new one into the future. But we'll just see uh, how that sort of comes out uh, over time. 
So we'll go back to, let's have a look at, we want to have a look at this one again, the flow through farm. So we'll go back to here and talk about feeding this system and the best way to get like something like a hungry bin working. Now, you can see in this image they show a lot of food, right? Now, if you've just got a lot of like it's like leafy greens and things like that, like a lot of lettuce and salads and, you know, like not sort of like funky fruits and things like that, you can put a lot more food in. But if you're putting things like watermelon in there, you know, um, tomatoes, those sort of like very fruits with a lot of moisture, you'll end up with a lot of vinegar flies, a lot of other problems. Um, so I always recommend that you sort of don't overfeed your farms, but you know, if you're putting leaves and things like that in the top, uh, that's that's quite fine. So you can see in the in the image that you can see just underneath it's gone, gone sort of humusy and that area there, uh, we can see underneath the food is the feeding zone. So they're feeding that, turning that into um, into a worm compost. So it's, it's becoming uh, vermi compost, worm poo, right? And you can see it in that next layer. It starts moving through and it falls down through the farm and it's collected out here down below. Now, each time this water's coming through, pouring a big bucket through, I recommend that you pour it back through, have some type of blanket over the top. So as the farm sort of decomposing down and breaking down and breaking down and breaking down, it's becoming this where we harvest out of here. So essentially it's a system that's going down and down and down and down and down and down until eventually we're harvesting and using it on our pot plants, in our gardens, all those type of things. And at the same time, like a hungry bean can take like three months minimum. And they're a bit more at the start, right? Because you start to harvest and then you're feeding and then you harvest. So you're not actually emptying out trays and then grabbing a whole tray. You're just sort of grabbing parts out of the bottom. You will lose some worms out of the bottom uh, here. So you need to sort of keep an eye on that if you don't have many worms at the beginning. When you pour the liquid back through, you've got about three days for the worm if he's in the water before he'll sort of like die. So if you pour it back through, uh, fairly regularly, I recommend every day um, you're getting that bacteria back onto that food source there and it's breaking down slowly, 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 slowly. So if you've got any questions about how a worm farm works, let's get into it. Let's fire away and we will move into uh, Q&A, which uh, I'm very happy to do. And while we're doing that, I will bring forward some of our recent comments. All right, we've got a few people turned up since then. Uh, we've got 18 people watching, 15 thumbs up. And thanks everyone for coming so far. And it's great to have you here. I'm just going through our comments here. Vermicost, learn by doing. Great info, Marty. Glad I caught you live. Wish I lived closer to you to try out your mushroom compost. Oh, I wish you did too, mate. I tell you what, it's a bit lonely around here with what I do. There, I've discovered another composter that lives... Um, he, he's actually a landscaping guy, makes compost and sells it. Um, and he's not too far away. I met him the other day. But, yeah, it'd be good to just meet up with another YouTuber too and share video content and talk together and collaborate a bit, stuff like that. I'd really enjoy that. O'Donnell's Hosey Homestead. G'day, mate. Thanks for coming, Michael. Uh, bitter. So, remember, we're doing the Q&A now and uh, we'll probably finish up around about 10 o'clock Aussie time. A little bit of a shorter show today. Um, but yeah, happy to answer your questions. Uh, so just bought a first worm farm. Can't wait to see the results when raising seed. Yeah, look, you get really good results from the vermicompost and seedlings. They just love it. 10% is the way to go. I've never been able to go over four tiers either and it goes down three in a week or two. Agreed 2.0 would be a great design. Uh, I don't know why they just won't create these new ones. We've got all these different ways to work with plastics now. Um, like I said, maybe if I can design one uh, going into the future, it'd be good to work on a new system. And it'd be even great if we had the money to, to buy. Um, imagine if we all collected together and we actually owned the Aussie swag one. That would be really cool. Uh, very, very achievable too uh, if we all put it together. But, you know... Who knows, just dreaming again, maybe. 
Vermicompost. What are your thoughts on dry food like a worm chow, such as pulverized oats, pros and cons? I really like it, actually. Uh, I think once you lock the moisture into it, uh, it's a great protein source for them. Uh, it really gets the, the smaller ones breeding up and bigger fast. Uh, put some weight on them quickly. And yeah, the, the right from the small ones to the older ones, they like to eat it. And um, it seems to be the way to go. You know, a lot of professional worm farmers, they don't even feed these scraps and things like we do. Uh, like I just feed well, I don't feed my in, in my professional system where I've got the big farms. Uh, I don't really feed them much scraps at all. But, you know, at home, this is what it's all about, right? It's recycling and using it. And you do get a really high-end casting by using a lot of variety of food you get because you get more different types of microbes feeding on different types of foods and as the worms are eating those microbes the bacteria they're passing through the gut moving through and you get a more beneficial range but um as far as building up stock quick and getting them going fast i think uh definitely the way to go i know they use um chicken feeds and things like that and ones for baby chickens as well is a bit of a secret there for you uh, yeah, so I don't know about cons for it. I don't know. I think maybe the con would be that you just don't get a broad activity of bacteria. That would be the con, I would say. Garden Kings, g'day, mate. I've seen you for a while. I'm struggling to find the perfect moisture level in my compost bin. Hope you're being well. Aren't we all, my friend? <laughs> you just got to add more carbon, add a bit more nitrogen. You're working out. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, there's no such thing as perfect anyway, mate. Uh, it's just as long as we're happy, worms are happy, and everything's working, then we just go of it. Sorry, I had to take a call, but I'm back. Oh, that's okay. I had to take a little call too, but I just sent an SMS. I probably should have took the call. It would have been quicker. Uh, Organised to go for a little surf. Um, one of my mates wants to go when the, the tide's low so and start turning around and coming back in. Been feeling a bit weird today, I didn't sleep well, a few nightmares and things like that, and just, you know, I wasn't feeling my usual pick-me-up self today, so I think a paddle out in the water might you know, wash that off, you know. Uh, all right, Miri Retro. Is having compost bins where worms can have access to the ground going to, yeah, being good? Yeah, well, basically compost worms are a surface feeder, and your earthworms come up and down their vertical feeders, and they work really good in synchronicity together. So if you have a look at um, on my videos, it's called Biggest Worm Farm Ever, and if you look, and I've got them set up in my big, in, like I was gonna say industrial, it's not industrial, my big worm farm area now where I make the compost and everything to sell, um, I have something like that. And at the moment, when it's raining a lot, I see a lot of big earthworms coming more to the surface uh, up around with the compost worms and they're going up and down like that so the big worms the earthworms are going up through the system they're drilling holes making the air into the soil profile letting the water go through the soil and oxygen which is really great for the ground and land and then they come up they'll feed on the surface a bit and go back down taking that whatever they've captured back down drop it as a casting down in the soil profile and then the roots will grow around it so they're, and they're also moving around bacteria and stuff like that. So, yeah, I reckon they work really great in uh, synchronicity, and, and I really like that, that type of worm farming. Okay. Any tips on placement and worm farming in the tropics located in Darwin? Uh, I just really like think ones like that are connected to the ground more in the really hot temperatures um, because the earth keeps a more of a stable temperature. So you've got it closer to the earth, uh, you know, like the underground worm farms sort of thing. So look at sort of maybe that option or connecting up a, a worm farm like what I've got, biggest worm farms ever. So it's connected to the ground and to the to the, to the top part and they can move up and down to where they find their happy days and hot day, cooler days and be where they want to be. And in the early mornings, late evenings, they'll come to the surface and feed on that material that you're feeding them. So uh, tropics, I think you need a really big far, bigger farms so they don't heat up and cool down as much, keeps more stable temperatures. Hopefully that helps you. Hey Lisa, that's cool, got the DIY tubs too. 
Tommy Adams, I'd rather use free food sources than buy it. There's so many things you can feed them that would normally be thrown out. Well, that's what I'm about here, really, um, you know, for teaching is, is really about the recycling, the benefits of turning your waste into something valuable, Tommy. That's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm all about. And uh, yeah, I think it's the way to go for the general public, definitely. LP, good call, Marty. Get some fresh air and water. Yeah, I'm gonna, I've just got to get back to my buddy. And uh, he's been down there, had a look. So, yeah, I think it'll be good for my, uh, my mental health day today, so to speak. LP, very true, Tommy. I've heard some folks go to grocery stores and get stuff they're throwing out. I have enough food and plant waste to feed mine. Well, I do get coffee from the local shop. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, there's plenty of materials out there. Uh, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Hope you have a great day and a good surf. I think I will. Well, the waves aren't great, but there's some waves there that we'll go out and ride. And before this, this we're getting some mad rain on the way. Um, so I've got all my worm, my big, like in my commercial area, all the big piles, the big windrows. So they just move up to the top. They're fine. As long as we don't add as long as we don't get any floods and then because they can all just float away that's a bit of a worry garden kings great to see your setup at the three brothers sounds like your planner has given you some great ideas and i'm excited to see what's coming said that you'll put all your worms out then it got rained out yeah but they went to the surface they hung up high i've checked them they're around there's no problem um because i've got like you know a good meter above the ground and so they just come up and just sit in the top parts. So they're, 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 they're no problem. They're pretty smart. Um, they know how to deal with those, you know, rains and things. And I didn't see any get washed away. I even saw more earthworms coming up and moving up into there and saving their lives <laughs> in my system. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty clever things. Uh, keep firing away with the questions or anything that you'd like to share about it. Um, uh, I'd love to hear more from you guys and yeah I'd love to help you as much as I can um, before uh, I head off and go for a paddle all right garden kings I was thinking the worms would love the mangroves well I've just this is what I've discovered is this this big earthworm that I've never seen before not here at my place and they're huge man like monster things like I'm trying to get in front of the camera here it's like easy 20 centimeters long and they look like good fishing worms. So I'm thinking, ooh, maybe I'll grab one of those or two um, and uh, go for a fish at some stage if I can get them breeding in there. But who knows how deep they're going down. I've got no idea how often they're coming up. So it would be more of a time when they're up high and going and grab a few and then go fishing um, when the water's all brown and stuff and they, they know the fish is getting... If that type of food source is in the river and they'd be feeding on that so that's just a bit of food for thought there and we'll go back to into here and have a look at these these worms here really happy healthy compost worms nice and uh what's it detitus yeah possibly um i'd have to find out more about it you know look i i know a fair bit about composting and worm and compost worms but as far as it comes to earthworms and things like that it's a whole different game uh for me commercially seeing worm farming collecting worm casting in solid trays perhaps something to look at if you're getting a building one day um yeah rick i need to to be honest i need to set up a more of a studio space have uh, a way to do this differently uh, into the future so i can you know predominantly i'm an educator and i'd like to just have the studio set up so i can actually film i could shoot a snippet and then put it play it at the beginning of a live show uh and then we could go over it and talk to it and then we maybe who knows you know the technology is there i can grab the camera and walk over and we can look inside a farm right at that time or or you know look at the way they're growing the plants and things like that so I think it's just a matter of learning, educating, and but having the space. I'm fighting between being at home and then being there and down on site at the moment. It's full of mosquitoes. I'm just I can't concentrate, and um, and, and it's been and when there's no mos mosquitoes around, it's noisy. So I am battling a bit um, with the space, but I am breeding a lot of worms there. I'm selling a little bit of compost, and so 
if all else fails, we're still going to have lots of worms farms being built up, getting established, and building up bigger numbers. So either way, uh, it's going to be working good. But yeah, I need some more systemized something eventually uh, going into uh, the future. So if anyone's got any more questions, fire away. We've got a few more minutes to go. And uh, we're just going to run a show for 45 minutes today. It's a bit of a shorter one. We normally run for an hour. And I'm going to get out and, as I said, a bit of mental health day, enjoy the water and uh, catch up with my buddy. And then tomorrow is supposed to be down on site where I sell my compost tomorrow and people come down and meet me uh, and have a chat and, and uh, yeah, talk about what's going on on that Three Brothers site. But I think we're going to be rained out. So who knows? We might do another live show around the same time uh, tomorrow. We'll just see uh, how things go. So I actually made myself a lemon lime this soda water today. No Coca-Cola. <laughs> I like to give that stuff away. I like the Coca-Cola. I don't drink a lot of it, but I like it. And I'm, you know, I like my health. And it's probably the only thing that I, that I, probably is my only vice at the moment is Coca-Cola. You shouldn't count, you should count worms, not sheep to get to sleep. I wish I could last night. I had the worst nightmare and woke up going, <gasps> it would have been better if I was counting something. I was running. That's what I was doing. I was like an like admission man running away. I don't want to talk about the dream too much. It's a bit wild, but yeah, it was definitely not fun. When is your next life going to be? Seems like I keep missing you. I'm having a mental health with Gabby today too. Have a great surf. Yeah, we need to have those mental health days. Get some clarity into our life. Uh, I... I've been running them again sporadically, my friend, so Scotty, so I can't say, but if it's raining, we'll be out again tomorrow and uh, running another live show and having a chat about, yeah, this, you know, about composting, compost worms, sustainability. My main concern at the moment is really the way that money's going uh, and, and moving and becoming more sustainable in our, in our, even our small city spaces and stuff because the cost of living's going up and it's going to go so fast. I don't think the government really knows um, what to do at the moment, but that's just my opinion from what I see and I've been following this stuff for quite some time. As I said, I'm not a prepper, not something that I that I want to put into, in, but I put on this channel here, but I think it's time, food for thought, to start thinking about food security. Michael Sealy, YouTube him and put him on while you sleep, it's a game changer. Michael Sealy, okay. Um, oh, excuse me, that may help. All right, guys, let's get you across here. Um, we've got 19 people watching, 19 thumbs up. If you haven't given me a thumbs up yet, please do. I'd love to have a good bush ranger thumbs up. Show the YouTube algorithm that this was a cool video and that people liked it and helped spread the worms spread the worms, spread the message about composting worms, recycling and turning your waste into something valuable. I'm going to put some music on. You guys say goodbye to each other in here. I'll drag the comments across and um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll do a quick goodbye before we go. Let's rock out the theme song for the show. Love this song. And I'll pull across the comments, guys. So, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. We've got it. We've got to go through. I'm going to I'm gonna cancel that because we got a super sticker from Arbiter. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. I truly do. What we do is we have our audience here. This is my fake audience. that gives us an applause for the day to say thank you for that super sticker. Now remember, if you want to learn more about worm farming and you want to support the channel, there is a link in the description and you can become a worm wrangler and help this channel keep on going and passing out the message about turning your waste into something valuable. Thanks again, Arbiter. Much appreciated. There's a gentle breeze All the birds are making homes Inside the evergreens The air is clear With our loved ones close You can pick out every star Without a telescope
friends thank you so much for coming to watch this quick show sporadic i know but uh it's just stoked to have you all here if it's raining and pouring down as they're saying tomorrow is going to be we'll run another live show around about the same time on this channel so have a great day happy worm farming gardening and we'll see you at the next video real soon bye for now So if you grab onto my arm, let's take a walk until the sun gets warm. In time.